Hi, this is Nino from Cinema 5D. We're here in Pinewood in the UK and we've been invited by Sony uh, for the introduction of their new super high-end Cine Alta camera, the Venice. I'm here with uh, Sebastian Leske, Hello. who you certainly know from a lot of other Cinema 5D videos in the past. So Sebastian, <laughs> thanks for the invitation and uh, yeah, maybe you can just give us the most important points about the new camera. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining our launch event here at the DMPC Nino. So, um, yes, so today we launched the uh, the Venice camera, which is our new flagship model on the Sinata uh, range of cameras. So, uh, what is it so special about? We it's a lot. <laughs> so we made this uh, teasing announcement at Syndicate this year where we said, okay, we are developing a new flagship model, it's in development, and it's featuring for the first time a full frame sensor. So this it is. So Venice is featuring a full frame sensor which has a 6K resolution. And why we have chosen this 6K resolution full frame sensor is, first of all, shout out that for field. So everyone wants to get larger sensor size um, to get shallow depth for field um, because you can also use different uh, lenses so full frame super 35 uh, 4x3 anamorphic for example and anamorphic is the next step so we can get by using the anamorphic um, lenses the real the emotion the anamorphic look the the flares and um, bouquets so the it's a 6k sensor uh, that means you have the 6k if you use the full frame right or and uh, does it change when i use super 35 of course or anamorphic lenses um, correct. So it's a 6K in full frame. So it means if you are running the camera in full frame mode, you are using the full 6K. If you go to uh, Super 35, 16 by 9, or 17 by 9, or 4K, 4 by 3, you are using a portion of the sensor. So this is also one thing that you can get over sampling from the 6K down to 4K, for example, and get a higher quality in the picture. Okay. So in addition, um, what you can see, it's it's also a complete new design of the body. So we are still running with the PL mount. Of course, this is the industry standard. So you can attach every PL lens on the, ca on the Venice camera. However, by detaching this PL mount, which is really secured and locked to the body, there is the E-mount lever lock underneath. Because sometimes perhaps you have a shooting condition to say, okay, I would like to use this lens, a special lens, but it's not available as a PL. So then you can get an E-mount um, lens uh, from Sony or from other third parties. Very, very special is, uh, for the first time, we are using an 8-step ND filter system in the camera. So as you know that all the different cameras from 55 and 65 always are coming with internal ND filter because our cinematographers, they love to have it internal, don't put it in the, on the Meti box, um, quite, quite easier and faster to change. Um, however, it was always three or four steps. So now we have eight steps, so you can go from 0 0.3 up to 2.4, and just by um, pressing the button and then mechanically will be changed. Mm -hmm. um, um, I just have one question about the mount. You said the, the E-mount is underneath, so is it already there? Or can you, I mean, can the user ch change the, from PL to E-mount themselves? Um, so, yes. So it's, so the PL adapter is, or the PL mount is screwed with mean, six screws to the body and underneath there is the E-mount. However, it's, yes, it's there physically, but it's not working yet. Okay, but the user will be able. The user will be able to change it themselves, or is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So this is this is one was also one approach um, to make it really user friendly, and even for the rental houses in, in terms of maintaining. So um, regarding user friendly, the uh, Venice camera is also the first camera which have an interchangeable sensor block system. So that means that even when in the future a new sensor is coming out, um, you don't need to invest into the complete new camera, so you just need to invest into the new sensor block. And behind this, you have direct access to the fan. So this is for the rent laws or for every service uh, partner, quite easy to exchange the fan to clean it up and make the camera uh, up and running again. So even this was part of our feedback discussion with the customer all over the world to get it in. So. Uh, what you perhaps already spotted here, uh, we have a small display on the operator side. So um, 
we took a lot of, a lot of discussions and also um, uh, feedback from customers, from operators, from assistants to say, okay, what would be the best to operate and set up the camera? And we don't want to take all the flexibility from the operator away because sometimes they need to change a setting by themselves quite easily and quite fast. However, the full, the full operation and setup of the full Venice camera is on the uh, assistant side. So here you can see the full sub display and we also completely redesigned how you set up the camera, the menu structure, we really reduced the items, we changed the um, terminology of the, of the um, items in the menu so to have a really easy and um, fast um, access to the, to the menu. Um, so this is pretty much similar to what you have on an F5, F55, but on the op like on the assistance side in this case. Okay, um, because I see it here, um, the ISO, the native ISO of this camera is 500. This sounds quite low compared to other cameras that Sony introduced over the last few years. Why, you know, why did you select 500 ISO as a base ISO in in 2017? <laughs> so, so true. So. When we designed the sensor, um, we thought about, or we not only thought about, okay, to go ISO 500, 600, 800, 1000, 10,000, whatever thousand. So we also took into um, account dynamic range, so latitude, um, color reproduction, read out speed, everything about this. And um, for for this full frame sensor, we we um, have. Say, uh, we, we found out that ISO 500 as a base gives you the best performance for the picture. So with the ISO 500, so you got six steps above 18 degrees. So it's the same as for the 55, but you have nine stops below. So we really took care also about the dark area, about the noise, um, how the noise will be in the picture. Is it a kind of electronic noise or more organic noise? So all of this was also taken into account when uh, Venice was developed. Mm -hmm. So taking a look on the on the other things on the body, so you can see um, proper connectors from Limo, from Fisher. Um, 24 output and input for accessories, so um, the handle is completely, completely um, flexible. And what you also can do, you can swap this unit 90 degrees. So because sometimes, as an operator, this one is f next to a wall, or it's a, in a tiny location. You have to stay somewhere here yeah. uh, to look through. So it's completely flexible. And this was also based on the feedback uh, we got from the market. Um, this one is the complete, the body only version. So as you can see, body and then the camera. So recording on SPS cards in XAVC or even ProRes. Um, however, it's also possible to detach the battery plate and then attach the R7 recorder so that you are able to shoot in RAW or XOCN with, with a 16-bit um, format. Mm -hmm. So depending on the production needs, Small, larger, gimbal, handheld, shoulder, raw, XOCN, ProRes, mm -hmm. Venice can do it. Um, and the, uh, the recorder, the raw recorder, is the same recorder uh, you developed for the F5, F55? Correct. So, so even the viewfinder. So um, when we developed, and this was also the commitment to the market, we always say, okay, we want to keep um, the investment of our customers safe. So and develop also products and accessories which are able for current products but also for coming products. So the viewfinder was introduced for the F55, the R7 for the F55 and now you can move it over to the Venice camera. Yes. Um, one more uh, um, uh, plug that I, you didn't mention in the presentation, but we didn't see at uh, the F65 for is an HDMI, which is nice. Uh, but, but I think the F65 didn't have one, did it? Uh, no, the F65 doesn't have an HDMI. I think this was because of HDMI was not developed so much in this time. Okay. <laughs> but um, HDMI is here because 
with the HMI you can get 4K out of it with one cable, yeah. so which is quite convenient. And if you have an onboard monitor, sometimes you are using this with an HDMI. Uh, let's talk about where this camera sits now. It's obviously the top end camera, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we heard that you will continue to uh, offer the F65. So how do you see these cameras in parallel? And uh, you know where because it is the 8K camera, the F65. Uh, where do you see the you know is this a, is this going to be the beginning of a completely new family of camera cameras or so so you're right so, so the 55 and 65 and the 5 will stay in the lineup so this will be the additional as a as a flagship um, it's a it's a it's a different approach because with the venice camera and the, the full frame so you have the ability to use the anamorphic and the full frame lenses and um, the uh, 65 for example has the mechanical shutter which custom some customers really like to love uh, because it gives also some artistic intent in the picture so uh, yes this is the next generation so um, let's see <laughs> okay let us bring this to market first, please. <laughs> uh, last but not least, let's talk about pricing and availability. Um, you, I heard you will start uh, shipping the camera in February 2018 but not with all the features yet and the features some of the features are extra purchases can you explain that and how much will they be <laughs> so so correct so the the target is to ship it in feb next year um, the the body price so all the prices are not set yet so it's in uh, discussion so the the, the tentative list price we are targeting for the body um, is around 37k euros um, however um, the full frame and the anamorphic features they are on license ba on base so customers can decide if they want to uh, install the uh, anamorphic or the full frame for a week for a month or uh, permanent forever uh, because we also have heard during our research with the with the customers that they said okay I don't need the anamorphic always I'm okay to run Super 35, for example, or I want to go run a full frame, so they don't want to pay for it. Or they say, okay, I need it for this project, so I want to buy it for the project. So, to in addition to the uh, to the body price, um, the full frame and the um, anamorphic license permanent uh, is tentative list price targeting around 10k for both, so six six and four, um, and. Um, Yes, um, when it when it comes in February on shipping, it comes with version one. And we have already a roadmap for version two and version three. Version two will bring then the full frame um, license. Um, but as for the F5 and 55, we are quite open what will come in version two and three. And uh, this is as a download on our webpage, so that everyone can see okay what is in, what will come. So even surround view, for example, a fe uh, feature request since years for the F5 and 55 and F65 now available with the, yeah. with the Venice camera. So full frame will not be available from the start? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Uh, last question because I just thought of it, uh, what about audio? Is there an audio option for this camera if you want to you you run the audio right into the camera? You haven't spotted it right now? It's here. Oh. <laughs> Here we have an XLR and the headphone jack is on the other side. So audio is in, you can use audio uh, for sure, um, because we know that some, some customers who are using Venice, they would like to run audio directly in the camera, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thanks for this interview and yeah, thanks for watching and we'll probably see more of the Venice very soon and uh, also from IBC. Thanks for watching.